So Recreate uh, reached out to me to see if I wanted to do a beta test of their new small portable desktop laser and engraver. This is called the Recreate Lumos, I believe. And this is a early prototype and same with the software that I'm using. So this will not be a review per se, but more of an overview on the performance of the machine and how it works. Since this is a prototype and same with the software is in beta, it would not be fair for me to do a review of the machine. However, I was informed that uh, this is going to be near identical to the production unit. As you can see, everything is very well packed and uh, takes advantage of every little space. So unpacking, make sure you check literally every nook and cranny because something might be there. And yes, I did put that uh, build plate upside down. It'll be fixed later. Ah, look, a little piece of foam just stuck up there. You do have a nice uh, yellow and red pull tab there for your lens cap so you don't forget it while you're laser engraving. And we're going to just go ahead temporarily and place this module back in. There are four screws on the back of the unit that you're going to remove, and we are going to repurpose these for the exhaust port. The exhaust port has a nice seal, but we're going to make sure we do not over tighten these screws. Affix the exhaust hose with a hose clamp. You notice where the head unit sits on and gets secured to. There are pogo pins and then you have the connectors on the unit itself. And what's not in the picture is actually some USB ports on the back of this machine. So we're going to go ahead and place this back inside. There is a little bit of play in here. So we want to make sure everything is lined up nice and perfectly and nice and seated. Lift up the protective cover and we're going to take this big screw here and we're going to tighten it down and then use this wrench that's provided to actually give it that nice little bit of torque in. Don't over tighten. So who's we create going after? Well that'd be Xtool and this F1. This still goes for about $1,400 and this was released uh, July of 2023. It has dual source, a 2 watt IR and a 10 watt blue diode. It has autofocus, manual focus, expansion ports, and on the back here you'll see the exhaust port as well as the secure lock. And then we turn it around and you'll see the emergency stop on the upper left. And then when we go ahead and open this up, it does have a pass through on the bottom, which means that you can remove the build plate and you could engrave below the surface of the machine. It does come with this prism, that way you could actually uh, do some cutting if you so choose. But let's go ahead and put this together and go ahead and close it. When you don't innovate for two years and release a version two, guess what happens? Something better comes along. And this is the We Create Lumos. It, the biggest difference really is, is the IR module is no longer a 2 watt, but a 3 watt. You have the, basically the same things. So you got manual focus, up and down, autofocus, expansion port, and rotary. And on the back, you have your exhaust port and on off switch. This is wider and it's about three times the weight, but you have a bigger area for building in here. It's not that much bigger of a build area, but you have more room. And your prism, well, next tool doesn't fit, but this one actually fits right in the slot, which is really nice. And when we talk about build size or volume, it's pretty much neck and neck here. And we could take these uh, build plates off and take a look. And this is actually not relevant because these are just removable, but they're literally only about a millimeter or two off from your laser engraving area. So don't be fooled when the two build plates are next to each other like that. Now the biggest difference between these two machines besides the three watt versus two watt IR is that this actually has a couple of nice features, which is the nice illumination. And so you can actually see your material and that red dot up here is actually your um, focusing red dot and it has a camera for placement and it can be calibrated within the software. But all that means nothing unless you know the price difference. And let me put that on the screen. And with some early bird promotions, you could actually save up to $2,000 off. But in a nutshell, just the basic pack, the machine alone is $200 less than the regular F1, two in one. Given that you have nice lighting, a camera, and a more powerful IR, 
already this machine exceeds the performance of the original F1. So if you'd like to take a little bit more of a deeper dive into this machine, there'll be links down below for you to navigate with. And I'd like to introduce today's video sponsor, which is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. And I forgot to mention that there is a button on the top that is to activate your job. So now let's go ahead and continue on. We will be using the WeCreate software to actually use this machine. It's very simple to use. Like we're going to use um, some stone and you just click on the stone and what engraving you want in the picture down below. And we're going to go with that in the upper right and it tells you the speed and power. So you, pretty much it's that simple to use. So let's go ahead and cook and it actually gives you all the speed, power and everything. We're gonna go ahead and frame it, make sure it looks good. And then we're gonna hit start. And remember, you're going to have to click on the button on the top to process your job. This is going to take two minutes and eight seconds per coaster. And this is when batching really comes into handy with using these jigs that come with the machine. So you could crank out in just under nine minutes for coasters. And actually, that's a good profit margin to have here. And you can see how nice and clean and clear they come out. And with again, with those jigs, you can line them up perfectly every time. Having that material guide definitely pays off. Look at that. It looks just like almost the picture itself. So all the settings were spot on and did four of these coasters in less than nine minutes. That's pretty darn good. And I believe the quality is pretty spot on. So let's continue on to something else. Let's use the same design and we are going to use a pine coaster this time. And we're going to do a frame to make sure it's where we want it and use the jig. And let's go ahead and see what they have for wood. Well, apparently there's no pine in China. So we're going to use basswood and hope it works. And then we wait for it to load. And then in the lower right, we're going to click on the preview and let's choose what burn we are looking for. And I'm going to go with right in the middle. And it says um, the power is at 55. And I got news for you, I did increase this over time to about 80% power. You would see in the time lapse here that I, uh, it's just a little bit too light, especially for the let's cook part. So I did increase the power two more times. And then I finally got it, the burn that I was looking for. So here we're going to do the time lapse again, and we are going to run through a small batch. So these take about three and a half minutes each. And for a set of four, we're looking at around 15 minutes. I'll be providing links down below of where I purchased them. So you can purchase them yourself. All right. Now that this is finishing up, let's go ahead and take a look with wood and grain. They are very inconsistent. So you will always be battling the grain and you have inconsistencies with lights and darks. But overall, this came out fantastic. Now you may want to use some type of clear coat because it will absorb any of the moisture from the glasses. But otherwise, yeah, this is a very profitable uh, piece for you to do. And again, you can do four of these in less than 15 minutes. So. Again, it's about uh, speed, performance, and how much money you can make with this machine to recuperate your costs of the machine and become very profitable. Now, this is a new world for me. I uh, did a AI image of a Ford F-350, and this is a leather patch. So I'm gonna just look for leather, and I'm going to try to pick something that looks around the same type of color. And then we'll pick that um, it looks like I can just screw up a little bit and right there, the two millimeter looks good to me. Now, when we click on the image itself, it's going to give you lots of different settings, uh, DPI and everything. And I want to actually increase the DPI on this because it is an image and there's a lot of detail. So let's go ahead and bring that up a bit because I just want it to be pretty crisp. This is a pretty small iron on patch. 
so I just want it to be as nice as possible. But also keeping the engraving time pretty low. Again, we want to try to increase our profitability, but maintain quality. So each patch will take about 49 seconds. And this also reminds you to, when you hit send, to go ahead and press the button on the top to process the job. Now I should have gotten into this leather patches early on because as you can see, it does it pretty darn fast and the image quality is great. And since this is basically an iron on to activate the glue on the back, it, I mean, the profits on this is insane. You can look at the, how nice this came out. And you could just throw a logo on here. You could throw anything you want. You could just throw, wording is, it comes out like the contrast is amazing. So I just wanted to do an image so you could see how nice and crisp the detail is. So let's do a batch of like, I don't know, like 10 or 12 and see how fast it goes through them. When it comes to laser engraving round objects, using that jig is the simplest thing to do because typically, unless there's a top and bottom, it doesn't really matter. You just place it in there. As long as it's bumped up against it, it's lined up and you just keep on going. Again, these only takes about 40 seconds. And even if it was wording, I would picture that it would take around the same amount of time. So I was able to blaze through all these in less than what, six minutes or so. And yep, that is just pure profits right here. And I'll put a link down below to where you can purchase them. Now let's talk about cutting. So we're going to cut through this. This is basswood. It's stacked. It's two, three millimeter sheets. And I want to try to do it in one pass. Now I want to warn you that uh, you should not go too slow because you can not start a fire. It does have fire detection and it'll alert when it goes off. But I want to see if we could cut through six millimeters with one pass. So you'll see the power is at 100, speed at two millimeters per second. This is real time right here and it is burning nice and clean. So let's go ahead and watch it complete here. And you want to make sure all the smoke is exhausted. It does take a few seconds. So get used to doing it that as part of your workflow. Don't open it right away. Okay, let's go ahead and open it and take a look. Nope, it did not burn through the other side. So let's go ahead and separate this a little bit and should just be able to pop it out. Yep. And uh, yeah, so we were able to burn through the, the three millimeter, but not all the way through to the second sheet. So let's go ahead and test this again. But this time I'm gonna keep the power and speed the same, but I'm going to do two passes. And let's see if that works. And I was able to line this right on the edge with the camera. You can actually see it going through, through the prism here. And we definitely know that it cut through both of them. So it looks like possibly, as far as I can tell, two passes should do the trick. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up, lift up the first piece, and there it is, no problem. Let's go ahead and remove it. And the second, let's get that off the top there. All real time here, and yep, falls right out. So two passes for six millimeter. That was from the previous one for the one pass. Now with the Galwell laser, cutting is a little bit different. So what I wanted to do was show you a different test here. This is practically straight up and down. So I wanted to do a test this way versus towards the bottom and show you the difference. This is almost straight up and down for a cut. It's on a slight angle, but if we take the other one that was at the bottom, look at that. So that's because the beam is actually on an angle to get to those outer edges. So if you're doing a puzzle piece or something, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Since this has a 1064 nanometer three watt IR, it can actually engrave metal. A 455 nanometer diode will not engrave metal. It'll only mark it. You can achieve colors by speed, power, and height, as well as frequency, but you cannot control frequencies with this laser. So it basically, it's just speed, power, and height. And within the WeCreate software, you could actually assign numbers for those colors to do a nice color palette. Now you can also do material tests, like I mentioned. So we're gonna do a regular material test right now. And the test I did, it has something a little bit different that the results are gonna be, but you just do your test array pretty simply by 
explain the parameters that you want. And then I'm going to just uh, shrink this up and throw it on a dog tag. This will give me some ideas of how I want to laser engrave some of these dog tags because I'm looking for a nice dark contrast. And by doing several of these, I could get an understanding of where it's going to be and um, how long it could take and making sure that I get the results that I want. And every material behaves differently. So I would suggest doing this for every material that you have. Because most materials are going to, whether they're natural, organic, or, you know, a, like a, a steel, stainless steel or something, it could be an alloy with different mixture of compounds. So it's definitely worthwhile to do these tests. And then you can save these samples for later as a reference point or save them within the software. And using this grid, I am able to come up with the settings that I'm looking for, for the dog tags. Again, I wanted nice dark contrast. So let's do a Shelby symbol. Since this Shelby emblem slash logo has a lot of detail, 100 line density is not going to be enough. So I am going to bring it to around 250 and the power is going to remain the same. This way I could get all the detail in there because if it was just maybe words or something, that wouldn't matter as much. And each of these are going to take about 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Even with the reflection on this time lapse, you can see that it's got some good detail. And the contrast is definitely what I am looking for. Because you don't want to just have to see this when it's on an angle. You want to just be able to see it dead on. And that's the whole point of having a reflective surface of something like this. And again, you can tell it's engraving because it's got some residual um, parts left behind. And look at that. It's very crisp and clean. All the details are there and you can feel a slight engraving on it. Pretty darn nice. Now even though this is a prototype and the software version that I'm using is in beta, I like to give some of my remarks about this. My overall experience with the machine was very positive. The software is a little buggy, but again this is the pre-release. I did have to restart the machine a couple of times because it lost its connection and currently I could only connect to it over Wi-Fi and not USB. I prefer USB because it does transfer the files much faster. And the fan on the back is not removable, so that means that you have to try to clean the blades with a Q-tip or something without taking the whole darn machine apart. I like to have something that's serviceable to be easily accessible and removable. And the Wii Create is a lot heavier than something like its competitors, say the F1 by Xtool. So definitely want to be prepared for that. But let's go over some of the positives. It's a shame that, you know, the lack of innovation at Xtool has um, really shown itself because it allowed other competitors to really take the, the crown here. I mean, just simple things like adding a camera for a part placement and increasing the power of the IR, just those two things alone is a worthy upgrade. And currently the early bird pricing, you are over $200 less than the, the regular F1. And not to keep on driving this, but lack of innovation and in doing a version two with almost two years since this last production date of the F1 allows companies like we create to take the crown. So even with this being a prototype, and using beta software, this did exceed the performance of the F1 by Xtool. So if you found this video useful, there are affiliate links down below that will cost you no extra. So if you want to, please use them. That just helps support the channel and allows me to purchase materials to do these tests. So I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you again on Tripod's Garage.